Back coming up to 24 minutes uh, past, Labour's Sir Keir Starmer has slammed the Queen's speech yesterday as a pathetic response to the cost of living crisis, and he promised that a Labour government would rise to the moment where this government has badly failed. But after pledging to resign if found guilty in his Beergate investigation, could he face a leadership challenge? The Shadow Justice Secretary, Steve Reid, joins us now. Very good morning to you, morning. Mr Reid. Good morning. No relation. Different spelling. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, look, I just let's talk first about this crisis that people are facing because it really is the biggest thing on people's minds right now. Um, there is an accusation, I know, coming particularly from your party and other opposition parties, that the government should have announced measures in the Queen's speech yesterday. The government says, you know, they have done stuff to help. Um, and they are providing money so that people are targeted and can be supported, that it's a global crisis. What would Labour do if you were in government right now? What would you dif do differently? Well, I mean, it is remarkable. We've got... We're facing, as a, as a country, the worst cost of, cost of living crisis in the generation. After the Chancellor sat down in his spring statement just a few weeks ago, the average household was £2,600 worse off. So, of course, in this Queen's speech, the government should have done more to help. And, and something they could have done straight away um, is announced that they would be imposing a windfall tax on the energy companies who have made three, four billion pounds in surplus profits above and beyond the profits they intended to be making because price rises of energy have gone up so much. A windfall tax on that could be used to cut household bills by up to £600. That's okay. real help I'm going to, right now. OK, I'm just going to play devil's advocate uh, here. The, the government is putting a lot on growth and employment and investment and companies having the money that they need in order to grow the economy. Because if you're going to look mid to long term, it's about improving the prospects for everybody, including employment and green measures, of course, which are, are very important. And that taxing companies puts um, a dampener on that. Well, the, the, first, the first point on that, Susanna, is... Um... These are surplus profits. You're not taxing the profits they expected to make. These are unexpected profits. The, I think it was the chairman of BP said they had so much money they didn't know what to do with it. Well, you know, let's use it to help people who are really can't afford to, to heat their homes or, or feed their kids uh, right now. But I'm glad you mentioned growth because the reason that we've had these 15 tax hikes from the Conservatives, the reason we've got a high tax economy is because we have a low growth economy under the Conservatives because they haven't invested in it uh, for the past 12 years. Uh, the growth rate under this Conservative government, the full 12 years, are 25% lower than they were each year for the 13 years of the Labour government. And had the Conservatives grown the economy by investing in it at the same rate that Labour did, the Chancellor would today have £30 billion more to spend on helping uh, people with the cost of living crisis, improving our National Health Service and other public services without increasing taxes by a single penny. Well, so the government I, I, again, has failed on once growth. Once again, I mean, one of the unique factors, of course, is the COVID pandemic. And at that particular time, people remember, actually, the government was incredibly generous in supporting people through that. We also have this unique situation where we have a war going on and that's putting unique pressures on our economy. Well, well, the, 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 growth, the growth issue, Susanna, predates the pandemic. This is for the full 12 years of the Conservative government. And, of course, the world has gone through a difficult time recently with the pandemic. But if you look at how different countries are performing, our country has the lowest growth and the highest rate of inflation. Inflation now is 7% proje projected to become 10% by the end of the year. OK, so we're with doing all this worse. going we're, on, we're Steve doing Reed, worse yeah. our, OK, we're, and, and we're people doing will worse. hear this, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree, but with all this going on, people would think, why then are you yourselves not actually making hay? Because you are involved and embroiled in a, a, a leadership crisis with your leader having to come out and do a press conference where he says he faces the prospect of not even being leader at the next general election. Well, I think Keir Starmer's done absolutely the right thing, actually. Um, he said that if the investigation into what happened in Durham results in a fine because he breached the lockdown rules, he would resign as leader of the Labour Party. And that's the right thing to do, because people are furious at the idea 
that lawmakers might also be lawbreakers. It just it loses trust in the whole system. Now, I don't think Keir Starmer broke the rules at all. Uh, it was a work event he was at. They had some food, then they continued well, working. Uh, there if, is no equivalence you, between if, that if and, and what went on in Downing Street, but, where there have been 50 fines issued to mm. Downing Street staff, including to the Prime Minister, 12 events uh, investigated, yeah. suitcases of booze being wheeled in, sound systems being wheeled in. It was more like the Ministry of Sound than a government ministry but, but uh, under, good, under Boris sound, Johnson. He's like, been fined. He's refusing look, if, to Mr. resign. Reed, Mr Reid, if you don't think, you personally do not think that he broke the rules and he claims absolutely not to have broken the rules and he's very, very confident of not being fined, why on earth offer to resign? It's a sort of a gam Damocles hanging over your party's well, because, head. It's because a very the police thing are... to do, isn't it? The police will take the decision ultimately, not, not Keir Starmer or me. And if he's breached the rules, however inadvertently, he will resign because Keir Starmer has integrity where Boris Johnson clearly does not. And the reason this matters is that people think politicians are all the same. Keir Starmer's just shown that they're not. Keir Starmer's put his career on the line if he's found to have breached the rules that he voted for. Boris Johnson thinks he can get away with breaking the rules and that the rules are only for the little people. We can't go on in our democracy like that. We need higher standards of integrity and Keir Starmer has just shown that he is prepared to champion them where the Prime Minister is not. But I just don't understand how he has to, th to threaten, as it were, to resign when he's so confident that he hasn't broken any rules. It seems a bizarre thing to do, and I'll put it to you again. It's political theatre, isn't it? It's not a threat, it's an offer. Well, I don't know whether he's going to be fined or not, and nor, and nor does he. I think he's taken a very brave stand to show that politicians are not all the same. I wish the, pr the Prime Minister had the same level of integrity and principle that Keir Starmer has, because trust in politics would not be well, at the abysmal level that it is today. If you, don't, if you don't know if he's going to be fined or not, that implies that you have some doubt about his innocence. If you don't know, I mean, surely you're well, super I, I confident I'm, that he I'm won't sorry, be fined. I'm sorry, Richard, I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I do not believe, from what I've heard, that there was a breach, but the police are investigating it and not me, and we'll find out in due course, I think. So you might be wrong, then? Well, of course I might be. I'm, I'm often wrong, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and he might be wrong. And his, and his deputy might be wrong. Uh, uh, That's mean, right, but, you know, they, they, they've got their view. It doesn't sound to me like there was a breach, but it's for the police. It's, we don't investigate ourselves, the police investigate. What I do know is that the Prime Minister did get a fine for breaching the rules and thinks he can cling on. What message does that send to criminals? You know, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to crack down on crime in this country. Why should, criminals are saying, why should we obey the law if the Prime Minister can break the law? All right, what okay, let's, let's, let's say that your doubts come to fruition and uh, he has broken the law and he is fined and he does resign. Who takes over? Well, there'll be an election. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that would be. Let's see, what, let's see who puts himself forward if we get there, and I hope we don't. But I think he's done the right thing. I, I, you know, you can't just blunder on um, in the way that Boris Johnson is doing. You can't be a lawmaker and break the law. It well, sends so much the, the wrong signal is, to the country. Steve Reid, the trouble is for the Labour Party, that's exactly what the Prime Minister's doing. You know, but by even if Keir Starmer resigns, I'm not sure that does what this political yeah. point is aimed at matter. doing, which is increasing the pressure on the Prime Minister. Because Boris Johnson doesn't seem to be going has, anywhere. When you've got a party in government that has no integrity and no principles, as the Conservatives under Boris Johnson uh, appear to be, it's very important that the Labour Party shows that there is a better way to govern this country with integrity. Keir Starmer is a man of the highest moral standards and principles. That's why I backed him to be leader of the Labour Party in the first place. What a contrast between, between Keir Starmer saying that if he's found to have breached the rules, he would go, and a Prime Minister who says even if he get multiple fines for breaching the laws that the rest of the public were following, he still thinks he can cling on in office. And it's just he, As you say, if, if he does get fined, he will resign. And you, as you say, there'll be an election in the Labour Party. Who would you vote for? Lisa Nandy? I'm certain. <laughs> I don't even know who would be standing, and I hope we're not going to be in the position. I'll, I'll, I'll come back if it happens, and I'll talk to you then about it. All right. OK, that's a fair answer. Uh, Steve Reid, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, good you. to talk to you this morning. You